Hello students, let us continue with the chapter of angle and its measurements. Today what we are going to see is, we are going to see angles in standard position, angles in a quadrant, quadrantal angles and what do you mean by coterminal angles. Now students, we have seen what do you mean by directed angles. Directed angles are ordered pair of ray OA and OB such that the vertex of the angle is at the origin. There is an initial arm which is then rotated to the terminal arm position and thus we get the directed angle. Directed angle if taken in anticlockwise direction is known as positive. The directed angle taken in clockwise direction the measure is taken to be negative. So now let us see what do you mean by angles in standard position. Now any directed angle when the initial arm lies along the x axis then such a directed angle is known as directed angle in standard position. Let us see an example if I have this is my x and y axis. Now if I draw an angle such that such that angle AOP is the required angle which is found out by rotating the initial arm OA in anti-clockwise direction till it reaches the terminal position OP. Now in such a scenario we see that the initial arm lies along the positive direction of x-axis, the vertex of the angle O lies on the origin and we have turned the initial arm OA in anti-clockwise direction till it reaches the terminal arm OP. Such a angle with the initial arm along the positive x-axis is known as angles in standard position. So any such angle with starting from positive direction of x-axis and going either in anti-clockwise direction or in clockwise direction will be known as angles in standard position. 5. Angle in a quadrant Friends, consider a clock showing following timings. Here in all the positions, the initial arm is fixed at 3 along positive x-axis, but the final arm is in various positions. That means they are directed and standard angles. The position of the terminal ray decides the angle lies in which quadrant. Definition A directed angle in standard position is said to be in a particular quadrant if its terminal ray lies in that quadrant. Now, in such with such directed angles in standard position, let us see what do you mean by angles in a quadrant. Obviously, as the name suggests, we are trying to see whether the angle lies in the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant or fourth quadrant. Now, to do that, what is necessary to be understood is in which quadrant does the terminal arm of the directed angle lies. Now, for example, in this case, in the angle AOP, we see that the terminal arm OP lies in the first quadrant. So, we can say that the angle AOP the directed angle in standard position AOP entirely lies in the first quadrant. Let me draw a second angle. Consider the angle AOQ. Is this a directed angle? Yes, it has an initial arm, it has a terminal arm and I have rotated the initial arm OA in anti-clockwise direction to reach the terminal arm OQ. Similarly, is it a standard position angle? Is it a directed angle in standard position? Yes, it is a directed angle in standard position because the initial arm OA lies along the positive direction of x-axis and I have rotated it in anti-clockwise direction till it reaches the terminal position OQ. Now we see that the terminal arm OQ lies in second quadrant. Therefore, I will say that the directed angle in standard position AOQ lies entirely in the second quadrant. Similarly, you can do for third quadrant as well as fourth quadrant. So, depending upon where the terminal arm of the directed angle in standard position lies, we will say that the angle lies in that particular quadrant. 6. Quadrantal Angles 
if the terminal ray is exactly along the x axis or y axis, then that angle is called quadrantal angle. That is, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, or 12 o'clock in the watch. So here, directed angle XOP, directed angle XOQ, directed angle XOR, and directed angle XOS are all quadrantal angles. That is, it is the integral multiple of 90 degrees. Moving ahead, what do you mean by quadrantal angles? Quadrantal angles means whenever the terminal arm of a directed angle in standard position lies along the axis, that is the x-axis or the y-axis, then we say that that particular angle is a quadrantal angle. For example, if I say angle A, O and I mark a point here, let's say R. So, angle AOR is a quadrantal angle because the terminal arm OR lies along the positive direction of Y axis or in general lies along Y axis. Similarly, if I take another angle, let's say AOS, here angle AOS which if we measure, we know that the measure of this angle is 180 degree. Angle AOS, the terminal arm OS lies along the X axis. So again, angle AOS will be a quadrantal angle. Similarly, I can draw quadrantal angle along negative direction of X axis as well. So angle AOT is also a quadrantal angle. Third type is coterminal angles. Friends, this is very interesting. It is like siblings of the same parents. Surprise! I'll tell you, like your mother and father, in this type of angle, the initial ray and the terminal ray are on the same position, but the measures of the angles are different. Let us see how. In this case, measure of directed angle AOB is equal to 30 degrees. We have learned that straight angle is of 180 degrees, isn't it? So, if it takes one complete rotation, then it is 360 degrees. Now, further if we rotate OA till OB, then it will be 360 degrees plus 30 degrees is equal to 390 degrees. If it is in opposite direction, that is, from downwards, it will be 360 degrees minus 30 degrees is equal to 330 degrees and so on. Thus, angle 30 degrees has sibling angles like 390 degrees or 330 degrees and so on. So the conclusion is, if the two directed angles are coterminal angles, then the difference between the measures of these two directed angles is an integral multiple of 360 degrees. We have understood what do you mean by angles in quadrant and we have understood what do you mean by quadrantal angles. Let us see the next part which is known as coterminal angle. Now, angles having the same initial and the terminal arms is known as coterminal angles. So, how can angles have the same initial arm as well as the same terminal arm? Obviously, initial arm can be the same because we are talking about angles in standard position. All the angles in standard position start from positive direction of x axis. Now for having the same terminal arm, the angle will have to rotate completely 360 degree and come back to the same position. For example, if I consider the first drawn angle over here, that is angle AOP. Angle AOP is surely angle in standard position. The initial arm OA is along positive direction of x axis. Also, we know that it is an angle in first quadrant because the terminal arm OP lies in the first quadrant. Suppose this angle that is AOP, the terminal arm OP completely rotates in anti-clockwise direction in a full 360 degree. So, if this rotates 360 degree and comes back to this position to arrive at a point, let's say M. 
So we see that the terminal arm OP has rotated 360 degree and come back to the same position and we have got a new angle AOM. In this case, directed angle AOM and AOP both have the same position of initial arm, both have the same position of the terminal arm. Hence, these two angles, angle AOP and angle AOM will be known as co-terminal angles. That is angles having the same initial and the terminal arm. Hello students, let us continue with the discussion of angle and its measurements. Today, now we are going to see what do you mean by what are the measures of an angle. How to measure an angle and what are the different systems of measurement of an angle. We have seen that directed angles in standard position are angle having the initial arm along the positive direction of x axis. And this arm rotates either in anti-clockwise or clockwise direction to reach the terminal arm position. And that's when we say that it is a directed angle in standard position. Now, whenever an arm of an angle moves from initial position to the terminal position, it sweeps some rotation. This rotation of the angle is measured and this is what we are going to study in this topic. Now, this rotation of an angle or this measure of an angle is measured in two types. One is known as the sexagesimal system or as we commonly know it as degree measure. Then the second system what we are going to study is the circular system whose measure will be in radians. Systems of measurement of angles. One, sexagesimal system or degree measure. Friends, earth revolves around the sun and completes exact angle of 360 degrees in one rotation. But the minute change in the position of the earth makes a lot of change in all geographic conditions. Hence, the 1 upon 360th part of a complete rotation is called 1 degree and is denoted by 1 and degree symbol. It is just like the hands of a clock. If earth covers 1 upon 60th portion of a degree, then it is 1 minute and is denoted by 1 and a dash and the 1 upon 60th part of 1 minute is called 1 second. It is as same as clock. Hence 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes and 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds. So let us first understand the degree measure and how the degree measure is defined. So, let us consider a directed angle in standard position. So, let us consider the angle AOB where OA is the initial arm and OB is the terminal arm. Right? Now, we have to measure the angle AOB and first we are going to understand the degree measure part of it. To understand the degree measure, we need to understand that the terminal arm, when it starts from the initial arm position, it can take a complete rotation which we say as 360 degree. Now, the degree measure is defined as follows. The degree measure is found out by dividing the complete rotation of the angle into 360 parts. So, when we divide the complete rotation of an angle in 360 part, each part measure is known as one degree measure. So, I can say that one by 360th part of One by three sixtieth part of complete rotation is equal to is equal to one degree. So we have defined one degree as one by three sixtieth part of complete rotation. Now one degree is further subdivided in two more parts. So let us understand that we say that one by One 
1 by 60th part of 1 degree. So, if we divide 1 degree in 60 equal parts, then 1 part is known as 1 minute denoted as 1 with 1 colon or 1 dash in it. So, 1 by 60th part of 1 degree is 1 minute. Further subdividing 1 minute in 60 part, we will get 1 second. So, I can say that 1 by 60th part of 1 minute is known as 1 second denoted by 1 with double dash. So, we understood in sexagesimal system or that is degree measure system, we divide a complete rotation in 360 parts, each part known as 1 degree. 1 degree is if further divided in 60 parts, each part will be known as 1 minute and that 1 minute further divided in more 60 parts, then that small each part will be known as 1 second. So, this is the sexagesimal system of measuring angles. 2. Circular system or radian measures. In lower standards, we have learned that even if you want to show your subject marks in this way, you need to know the radian measure of the angle or to know how the earth is getting polluted with different reasons or production of the goods in various industries etc. or to know the economy of India by studying the employment by sectors, we need to learn radian measure of an angle. This type of representation is called pi diagram. Now let us study how to draw radian measure. Let R be the radius of a circle with center O. Let A and B be the two points on the circle such that the length of an arc AB is R. Then the measure of the central angle AOB is defined to be one radian. It is denoted by one and superscript small c. Thus, mathematical definition can be given as one radian is the measure of the angle subtended at the center of a circle by an arc whose length is equal to the radius of the circle. Now let us study one theorem about a radian angle. The next system of measuring angles will be the circular system. So let us understand the circular system of measurement of angles. The circular system of measuring an angle, we obviously will require first a circle. The name itself suggests we will require a circle. So let us draw a circle first. So we have drawn a circle and let us say this is the center O. Now I will be drawing an angle. So I draw a an angle and with the angle I am getting a arc AB. Rather I have marked an arc AB such that it subtends a central angle AOB. Right? Now, if the radius of the circle is R, I have marked my arc AB such that the length of this arc is also equal to R. So, the length of the arc is equal to the radius of the circle. In this case, the angle subtended by arc AB, that is angle AOB, measure, the measure of this central angle will be known as 1 radian. So here we get the definition of one radian, my students, one radian will be equal to the measure of the angle subtended by an arc such that the length of the arc is equal to the radius of the circle. This is known as the circular system or the radian measure. Subscribe to my channel. Click on bell icon to get notification about new videos.